I get out of there, I make sure that I um, am editing. And so I start editing, and except now the target is not geology arc, it's geology units. All right. I pick the selector tool and I select all of these features. And you see what's highlighted is the boundary and all of my contacts and faults. And that also turned on this wrench, or made active this wrench in topology. And that's the wrench that when I uh, click on it, is going to construct or create new polygons from selected features. And that's what we want. And I hit OK. And we hope that it has done it. Now, the way to test that is to off-click over here and then click on these. Now, that is a polygon. That's a polygon. And that's a polygon. So that looks pretty good. The way you will know for sure is to come up here under Geologic Units, right-click, open your attribute table, and voila, you have three polygons there. Now, how do you... Um, assign them a geologic unit. Well, it's pretty simple. We're still in edit mode. And so I can go to this first one and notice how it's highlighted over here. And I'm going to call that Quaternary Alluvial Fan 1. That might be this older alluvial fan. And I double click in there and I put QAF1 and return and notice how it instantly colors covers that colors it and furthermore just like a real geologic map it's a semi uh, transparent covering and if yours isn't that way double click on um, geologic units which brings up the layer properties go to display and make sure there's at fifth or something that appeals to you Okay, this is the bedrock, and this is Paleozoic Undifferentiated bedrock, bedrock. So I double click in there, P, lowercase u, return, and um, that's interesting. That's, I've done the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so let's do this one. That's the Paleozoic bedrock, P, U. Um, and this one we will call. QAT7. Um, it is whatever you think it is, but I'll put that in there and that becomes that color. Alright, and now we have got our geologic map colored. The next thing we want to do is to put our symbols in these areas because geologic maps will have a QAF1 in here and a QAT7 in here and so on. So we get rid of this and we move the target to the unit label and create some points here and here and here and of course we want one over here so and maybe one even in here and then right click on unit label and bring up the attribute table and you can see we have some points in here the most recent one I did was there and that is this is the QAT7 unit and so I'll we'll put that in here Okay, and that's also true for this one. Now, from time to time, you may want to refresh your screen because this doesn't look like anything happened in there. <coughs> so you come down to these two arrows that chase each other, and you hit that, and it refreshes the screen, and you see we now have these labeled nicely. We continue to do this, uh, just maybe one in here, and this is the QAF one. And make sure we save. 
and close out of there and refresh so we look at it and yeah that looks that looks pretty good all right so let's say that that's okay um, we save our edits we stop editing and now the next thing we want to do is look at our line of section here and to prepare the line of section across there we first need the topography so let me show you how to get that go to 3D Analyst and make sure that the DEM is the digital elevation model is picked. Grab this symbol right here, click and hold at this end of the line and drag a line up to the other end of this and double click. And that's the line along which you're going to show topography and then click on this right here. Finally, we want to export our map, put a North Arrow on it, a uh, scale and so on, and get it ready to bring into Illustrator or Inkscape for our final version <coughs> with a legend. And so you move up to view layout view to do this and you can see what you're going to get here you've got eastings and northings around it now you can do a lot of manipulation here I'm going to do the minimum I'm going to go to file uh, page and print setup sorry and I want to put this out to a PDF file so I can import it into Illustrator in tabloid format 11 by 17 and uh, let's do this in landscape so that looks pretty good like that and if I click on this I can move this around I'll compress the uh, outline here. We'll put it down here like this and then we'll use this for our legend North Arrow. To get those go up to view um, sorry insert scale bar pick a scale bar that's to your preference we'll get that in here. Now technically you don't need it because you've got the Latin long but it's a nice touch and we'll put the north arrow on just some generic north arrow which you also don't need but uh, we'll put that over here what you do need certainly is the legend and you have a number of choices here I don't think we need to tell the reader what the map boundary is and so these are what's going to be in the legend so I'm going to move that over Line of section, yeah, maybe that's nice. Geologic units for sure, geologic arc for sure, unit labels not necessary, and these ortho images are not necessary. You might want to put this on the actual digital raster graphic topo map. You get a lot of choices in through here. I'm going to leave these as the default because I want to do all of this in Illustrator or Inkscape. So I'm not going to worry about any of this. And there is my legend. And of course it's it's way too big. Um, <clears throat> but that's that's not a problem because I'm going to bring it in and then move it around and get it adjusted up at the top. I definitely want it to be exportable so I go to file export map export as a PDF and we'll export this there resolution of 300 is good I say save and that's it you're on your way. Happy mapping.